So today, what I'm going to be talking about today is the sign of Aries. Fiery, fast, uh, um, initiator, cardinal sign. It is the element of fire. It's the first sign in the zodiac. It is incredibly passionate. Um, it is ruled by Mars. So it's all about being a warrior, being the first, because it's the first sign as well with that fire. It is the first into the fray. They, they dive in, ask questions later. They're probably the ones that uh, created the Just Do It um, logo for Nike. Just do it. Just get in there and do it. So they are um, impatient, impetuous. Um, they can get bored really easily. They have a great deal of passion to discover the world, to discover themselves. They're known for being very selfish. That doesn't mean they don't care or can't be in long-term relationships or, um, or care about other people in general. They just tend to come from a place, if you think of an infant, um, it can be deeply spiritual as well if you think of it this way. When you see an infant, you can see the whole universe in that infant's eyes. That they're no longer, everything is a part of them. While the Taurus is starting to grasp on that this is different from me, my mom is different from me. The Aries, when we back up, the Aries is all about everything is of me. Which is actually not a bad way to look at the world. Where it can go into challenge is if and when an Aries starts thinking only of themselves and only worries about uh, how it looks to them and what can they get out of it. Like with any sign, once we become self-centered in any way, in that way, it can end up being our downfall and make us very lonely. Um, and every human being and every sign's probably gone through a bit of that. But Aries has a tendency to go through a bit more of that. Um, they are, um, they're feisty and they are so brave, like th they just have this courage to them and maybe because they don't want to spend their time thinking about something, they just want to do it. Now that of course can change if they have, for instance, a Virgo moon or a Virgo rising or an Aquarius rising, Virgo probably more so, or, um, Gemini moon or rising because they're both ruled by Mercury. So they're going to be big thinkers. They're going to want to think about everything, but then they're also going to want to take action. And it's possible, depending on what they look like, Virgos are a little bit more subdued and more cautious, while Geminis um, are all about seeing all, all aspects of the same subject, um, seeing um, as much information and gathering as much information as they possibly can. So mixed with an Aries would make them very dynamic in the world and wanting to learn as much as they possibly could. And then getting super bored, super fast. Um, what can I tell you about this particular sign? Um, yeah, it doesn't mean that they don't have fear. They can have fear. They just don't tend to live in that place. They may have tremendous amounts of fear, but they'll still take action. They're still willing to take action. The only way that it would be really hard for them to take action is if their sign was um, retrograde when they were born, or they have some other signs in it that could possibly be retrograde, which means like it, it looks like it's moving backwards, um, or a sign that's much more cautious in there. In an, in an important place like Mars, how you take action. So let's see if I have any, um, any other things I can tell you about that first sign or the people that are these signs. So um, Reith, Reese Witherspoon is an Aries. Um, uh, um, I'm losing his name, the Italian guy who talks like this, but not Al Pacino. Robert De Niro is an Aries, uh, and he has a Pisces moon, so he has deep sensitivity, but a lot of strength to him, so great depth and strength. Um, Nancy Pelosi is an Aries. 
Uh, it's all about uh, these people taking action into the world. Uh, and they're ruled by the head. So a lot of times you can always identify an Aries, but they tend to have scars on their head, probably because they lead with their head. I'm not exactly sure. Now, it, what's interesting about this is it's a very masculine sign, super masculine sign because it's assertive. And it, it doesn't mean women can't be assertive. Of course, there's many Aries women. Um, and what's interesting when a, a woman is Aries is they tend to defy uh, traditional roles of femininity. Now, that doesn't mean, of course, that an Aries woman can't be feminine. Of course they can. But they're going to have this sense of urgency and bravery and um, I want to say follow through, but it's not always follow through because they can get bored in the middle of their action and change direction. Um, but this sense of being able to and being willing to and not even willing to enjoying the fight in life. They don't turn away from fights. They don't turn away from uh, heated discussions. Now, again, it always depends on what the other moon and the rising sign or the Mars sign is in their chart. But typically, this sign, um, I'll give you an example for myself. My uh, Venus is in Aries. So this is not the best placement to have your Venus because Venus is all about how you love and Aries is all about I'm going to uh, hit you in the face. That combination doesn't really work for love in the softest way. But where it does, where the positive aspects can be is when I love someone, I will fight for them. I will fight harder for them than I'll fight for myself. Like fight, I will even fight them against themselves. So if they're treating themselves badly, I will go head to head and, and be willing to join that fight in order for that person to be protected, even from themselves, as nuts as that may sound. Um, but having that placement can mean, especially in the Venus, it could mean that um, it's self-centered. So people with, uh, with a lot of predominant areas in their chart can really do a lot to remember that there's other human beings that are going through whatever they're going through that have their wants and needs and that are doing the best they can do to get those wants and needs met. When Aries, when an Aries loves you, they will give you the best that they possibly can. That, that is their nature is to show up and give you, to show up in that way, but it may be a bit harder for them to sit still with, um, emotions might get a little overwhelming for them again depending on where that moon is and if they have water in their chart but being that way with themselves too they can be so fiery that they burn themselves out really fast and then they've got to figure out how to replenish themselves and the best way to replenish yourself not is not always going for more action having coffee and going for a run to replenish yourself when you are already depleted is not the best idea. Although it's something the Aries really needs to do and the Sagittarius as well. They need physical activity. And what's also incredibly important for an Aries is nature. And the reason I say that is because Aries can get so, um, so fiery and moving and active and doing so much that the nature aspect, all signs, every human being can deal with more nature for sure. But the Aries will, if they're willing to do like really strong hiking and breathe in that fresh air and be surrounded by the purity of the world as it is without human influence, that can help calm their minds down. That's like a good moving meditation for an Aries. So we're at nine minutes. So I think I'm going to end here um, to end with. So I do astrological readings uh, for singles and for couples. If you are interested in having your in-depth um, reading done by me, you can go to hudsonlike.com. I absolutely love doing it. It's also intuitive. So those of you that are interested in deep deepening your connection to self, that's what it's there for. That's why I love doing it. The brave ones that want to show up and really reveal who they are so they can keep expanding while you're alive. That's what I love to share with. Um, do I have anything else to add? 
just happy Thursday, although it may not be Thursday when you watch this. Okay. Mwah.